What's up? This is EasyOSX, and welcome to another video. This video is going to be the start of my Securing Your Mac series, talking about Mac and security and how to keep yourself safe. I decided to start this up after uh, the recent Mac Defender scare going on. Uh, this video is not going to tell you how to get rid of it, only how to uh, protect yourself in the future, or to prevent yourself from getting infected at all. Today we're going to be talking about Max specifically, uh, Max built-in security measures. First of all, though, I want to emphasize the most important part of security is your own behavior. So if you're practicing good online behaviors, you're much less likely to get bit. But if you're visiting risky sites like illegal downloads, gambling, things like that, or if you're clicking every link that you see in your social feed or your email, you're more likely to get bit. That's just it, all right? Enough of that spiel. Let's just go to the video. The first step in being secure on your Mac is to keep it up to date. To make sure you are up to date, go to the little Apple icon here, click it, and go to Software Update. Mac will, of course, scan and let you know about if you have any updates. And it'll also include not just uh, Mac itself, but also Safari, if you have Microsoft Office, and a couple other programs like that, especially Apple programs. Another important thing, though, is with this update is to make sure you're using the latest version of your OS. Uh, as of this video, for example, it is Snow Leopard 10.6.7. I definitely would upgrade if you have the chance. Uh, the other important thing, though, is if you're using an earlier version of OS X, I would definitely try to get to Snow Leopard, and definitely no less than Leopard. Uh, in a couple months, though, Lion will be coming out. And so I definitely would say upgrade to Snow Leopard at the very least. So my rule of thumb is always be the latest version of your OS, but preferably the uh, latest cat, I guess you can say, in this case Snow Leopard, and no less than the one before it, Leopard in this case. Anyway, as you can see, I have no software updates. The next part is your actual Mac security. So if you go to your system preferences, and I'll go back here, hit the security tab, you have your security pane. This is what it looks like in Snow Leopard. Uh, in Leopard and other previous versions, it looks a little bit different, but we're just going to straight go through the different things. So obviously, this is requiring your password. Uh, if you have a screensaver built in or have it your display to timeout, uh, this is how long you, it'll wait before it has to uh, kick in the login screen. So once my screen falls asleep or the computer falls asleep, I have five minutes before I have to log back in. You can, of course, uh, change this to immediately, a few seconds, hours. Uh, I personally don't go less than five minutes, but you can change that as you need to. Next, disable automatic login. So if you log in, once you turn on your computer, it won't automatically log you in. Uh, requiring passwords to unlock each preference pane. That's this little lock right here. This is also good to make sure people don't uh, get in by default. They have to know your password to get in. Next, logging out after activity. You don't necessarily need to do this, especially if you have the require password thing. But uh, if you're gone or not doing anything, if I just left my computer for a certain amount of time, you would log myself out. The next portion we're going to go through is secure virtual memory. Uh, this is really a little bit more confusing, but what it does is uh, you have RAM in your computer, which allows you to multitask. The more RAM you have, the more you can multitask, and the smoother application will generally run. But occasionally, it needs a little bit more space, the Mac does, to uh, run the programs. So it'll write uh, to your hard drive and use that space as RAM. And of course, the more hard drive space you have, the more it can write to. Uh, what secure virtual memory does is it'll make sh it'll keep it more secure so that someone couldn't, uh, if they were really techie, really hack kind of guy or girl, they couldn't dig around and find some of those programs and files and stuff. Uh, the downside of this is it may slow down your Mac just a little bit, but I haven't noticed any major differences. Uh, disable location services. Most of the stuff this does is allow... Uh, your Mac to change with the time zone, uh, like your cell phone does, or uh, other programs that might want to access your location, maybe like Twitter or other programs that might use that, 
or for ad networks. Uh, this is more of a preference thing. I prefer it. I'm not usually going out of my time zone all that much. Lastly, we have the remote control inferred receiver. Uh, if you're using like an Apple remote or some kind of remote like to control iTunes, for example, uh, you don't want to turn this off. But what this does, if you do turn it off, is prevent any kind of infrared remote from interfering with the Mac, which is kind of nice in case someone decides to, you know, hack your computer with a remote. Uh, probably the least likely of any sort of hacking attempts, but, uh, you know, better safe than sorry. Next we have File Vault. File Vault is encryption, and what encryption does is, right now, if your hard drive is in your Mac, anytime someone goes to look at it, they need your password to look at any of that stuff. What someone can do, though, is take the hard drive out. Let's say a bad guy steals your computer. Uh, they can take the hard drive out, put another computer, and totally bypass all that stuff. What encryption does is kind of like encodes everything to the point that if they look at it and they haven't uh, decrypted it, then it'll just look like a totally bunch of random data, not even anything they can really read. All they figure out is this is either junk or you've encrypted it. And the only way you can unencrypt it is by giving it the master password. Now this does not encrypt your whole hard drive, it only encrypts, as it says, the home folder. So going into Finder, it'll only encrypt your uh, folder right here. So there are other better encryption tools, such as uh, TrueCrypt, an open source, kind of a better one. Uh, and a lot of people, especially with earlier versions of uh, File Vault, have reported a lot of problems. You will notice with any type of encryption that uh, your computer may be a little bit slower booting up. But it's very important that you don't lose this master password if you do encrypt it. Uh, if you do, you're kind of in big trouble. And that's true for any kind of encryption tool. So my recommendation, I don't have, I don't use File Vault. Uh, if you do want to use File Vault, uh, like I said, a lot of people have had problems with it from what I've heard. I would not use it uh, in any version before Snow Leopard. Uh, they pretty much what I've read, Snow Leopard and um, most versions going forward will probably have better file vault powers, but uh, be easier to use. So, but I do not use file vault. I would generally use something else. Lastly, you have your firewall, which was introduced in Leopard or uh, 10.5. This is in Snow Leopard, so it's a little bit simpler. If you're using uh, Leopard, it might look a little bit more like this. And I'll come back to this. You have three settings, of course. You have off, which is right here. Uh, on, which is just a green light. Or what I had, the yellow light, which is blocking all incoming connections. I'll get to that in just a second. But here, here are all the things that I have uh, that it want internet connection that I have authorized or not authorized. So you can see Skype, Opera I've allowed, but some other things I haven't. Generally, your Mac will ask you if you want to authorize stuff. If you don't know what it is, most of the time it'll tell you major apps like Dropbox or Gmoat. Uh, but if you don't know what some of them are, you can always uh, just go look them up. Now, these other two settings down here are automatically allowed sign software and stealth mode. What allowed sign software is, is as you can see, allows software signed by a valid certificate authority to provide services access from the network. Basically what this means is that certain websites and applications have certificates uh, that say, hey, I am who I am. It's kind of like a, a degree or a license of some sort like you'd have in real life. I generally do not keep this on, any kind of automatic stuff like this, because uh, some websites and applications will let their certificate expire and then a bad guy could grab them. We had some of that happen recently. A couple big websites like Google and such. Uh... Stealth mode, don't respond to or acknowledge attempts to access a computer from network. Basically, if someone tries to test the network and see what computers are on it, this would kind of ignore it. Of course, this would allow your green light. The most secure method is blocking all incoming connections. I generally keep this on. I have not had any problems with Skype or Opera uh, keeping this on. The only times I've had problems with uh, keeping it blocking incoming connections is for uh, other computers on the network like NAS and also uh, for example let me just point here 
this thing right here, which is part of my uh, university. Uh, this makes sure I'm up to date, I'm not doing anything illegal, that kind of stuff, mainly the update part, the Bradford Persistent Agent. Uh, installing that and accessing that, I had to uh, disable the firewall to access that and engage it, but afterwards I've had no problems. So, yeah. So basically, if you're not constantly getting onto a network drive, like a NAS or another person's computer through the same network, then I would uh, go ahead and keep it on. If you are, then you might just want to uh, tell it to not block all incoming connections. One last thing I'll just mention here, uh, you can't really see it, but Mac does have a uh, basic malware scanner. It doesn't get updated uh, to the extent that Microsoft would, uh, but anytime they update, they generally include some new definitions. Currently, the Mac Defender is not in the repository, but if it was or other uh, viruses or malware, uh, you'd get a pop-up window saying Mac doesn't like it. But you would usually only see this after or during the installation process of the malware. So, anyway, that is the first part of uh, Mac security, securing your Mac. This is EasyOSX, and don't forget to check me out at uh, easyosx.wordpress.com and on Twitter now at easyosx. And thank you for watching.